Welcome back to my channel, guys. Uh, Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are doing really well, no matter where you're at. Uh, God bless. Um, this time of the year, you will see a lot of watch hobbyists and watch lover communities uh, posting out their state of collection. And I, and I thought, you know what? It's the, it is the perfect opportunity to celebrate my... I've got 49 subscribers now. Again, thank you for the bottom of my heart. And I know it's going to hit 50 soon. And why not doing my state of collection video, my humble one so far in my life, in my journey, uh, to share with the rest of you guys of our love. And hopefully um, you're going to enjoy this video. And um, I hope to see you again, of course, in the new year. Okay, so let's start it off. Um, just before I go into the first one, um, I just like to share of my overall journey uh, in a high level. My current a collection of watches only contain one brand and that is I believe the greatest brand ever there is of course there are many great brands but this is my favorite uh, Seiko uh, I've had other brands uh, during the journey but I've, uh, I've sold them I've sold them and um, had the money back to bring this into the models that I believe will have a long-term relevance in the game and of course I do enjoy the variety and uniqueness um, of each piece um, I tried not to duplicate the same, um, I guess, uh, line of watches uh, for more than one. I try to have one piece. Um, I try to have a different shape, different classic designs. And I hope you enjoy my point of view as well. Uh, beautiful, guys. Let's start it off. The first one is actually the one that I bought for my wife. The first one is, no doubt, the Saab 035, the cream dial. Um, the heart of this watch, uh, there's just so many... Uh, videos and lovers out there uh, it has a really great following because of its elegance design um, the model was, was produced a decades ago i think i stopped production a few years back um, as you see there's no presage on the dial um, so this was before the consolidation of the sarp series um, so the 35 has a crim dial 6 out of 15 movements running really accurate the line of finishing is exquisite uh, for its price range. Um, again, uh, you probably know this watch uh, very well, more than I do, and, and I'm very happy to show you and very proud to have this as part of my collection. This actually goes to my wife. This was the first premium Seiko that I bought after my original Seiko 5. So Sarp 035. Um, naturally, after wife having enjoyed her so much of the 035, and I thought, you know what? Let's do her feel three three. Um, the black dial. The black dial looks slightly smaller. If we put them side to side, uh, to the zero three five. Very classic design. Again, the shame. Very pretty much the whole similarity with the zero three three uh, zero three five. Classic design. Very elegant. Um, um, the black dial. It is just so classic. Uh, you can really wear this watch into any coach, any occasions work or casual um as a matter of fact as you see i've purchased i've loved this watch so much i've decided to purchase uncle seiko jubilee um, um it just brings the whole um presentation really uh, to a different level uh, very comfortable on the wrist and i hope you enjoy this piece if you do have one uh really accurate 6 out of 15 uh, as my personal opinion um not only as as good of course a lot less a few hours in the 6 out 35, which is what Seiko doing in their movements now, by 6 out 15, um, very reliable, very accurate. I'll probably go from the top then. Um, uh, this one that I have here, um, I love it. Uh, as many of you know, this model, S&E uh, 498, this is the tuna model, a uh, tuna shape with that shroud. Um, it, it is a lot smaller than traditional true size of tuna of course but again very versatile has the solar uh, movements in there i think it's the v157 i could be wrong very reliable very accurate and so um cost effective to have in your piece grab and go uh, into your daily routine i think it looks just gorgeous i think from design perspective and color choices it's very similar to the old one of the pay tribute to one of the golden tuna that seiko had is a lineup very famous watch again i'm very Beginning to the hobby, um, in my home, in my humble opinion, this one speaks uh, great for its volume. It's fantastic. SNA four nine eight. Have a look in your local Facebook marketplace. If you don't have one, have one in your collection. Definitely works. Um, the second watch 
that from the top here is the SNZH uh, 55. Uh, this is the black dial. I think the 57 is probably the most well-spoken watch out of the uh, all SNZH communities at the, the lineups. The 55 really worked for me. Um, the reason why I put Trick on this colorway was because uh, Mr. Upstick Watches from Hong Kong, uh, he loved this uh, particular color wave. And I do see the reason why. Uh, Mr. Upstick Watches actually had quite influence on Fumat watches. And I do believe his opinion was uh, well selected for this particular one. Simply because of the um, the bezel. This actually had a Harlex um, layer of coating on it. So it's more, almost like glass looking. Of course, as we know, this SNZH line paid tribute to the, um, to the Black Palm uh, 50 fathoms so we call this 55 fathoms as as, as the model name from Seiko's the um, reflective of hard x lay bezel works really really well with that inner chapter of um, of, of inner chapter ring with the whole dial as you see there's no sorry there's no inner bezel uh, sorry the, the I mean this particular line of um, stainless steel around the around the edge of the crystal it works tremendously well uh, it's it's a domed um, hard legs and when you have this piece in your collection it, it, it spelled it, is, it speaks volume for the price and the value proposition that Seiko does I think is one of the greatest Seiko 5 in my opinion that ever produced this one definitely stayed in my collection and as you see, I've actually invested a bit more. Purchase, uh, of course, this is not a this is not a premium. This is relatively cost-effective uh, piece of rice bracelet, and I think it matches really well uh, in the overall vibe of the SNZH uh, 55 7s26 movements. Uh, um, again, this one doesn't uh, hack, and uh, even that you turn the crown. Uh, the other way around, uh, you won't hack the second hand. So from a time adjustment perspective, it's a bit poor. Of course, this one was, was produced a long time ago. Stop production. I think from a price retention perspective, it's doing really, really well. Uh, the next watch that I have here, I'll just probably get all three out of the way. Uh, this one, I just fell in love straight away with the first one that I saw. This one, again, was collected right on the early journey of my Seiko collection. And I bought it simply because how dynamic um, the dial is. I believe it pays tribute to the original design of the racing watches. There's no bezel. It's a huge chunk piece of steel, a very large size. Um, but again, uh, it's got so much character. And that combination of gold hands, uh, sorry, the gold uh, hands indices uh, plays really well with the green uh, dial. Again, as you see, there's not, not only one layer of green. Um, uh, overall, there's actually a few uh, Different colors of green, different shades of green across the whole across the whole dial. It looks simply uh, wonderful. And that orange hand, when that takes a line, uh, it just pays so much character uh, to your daily to to your to your daily routine. Uh, when you pick it up, you always feel comfortable knowing this watch is going to stand us from the crowd. Again, I invest. I I love a piece of rice bracelet. If you can tell, I've invested. This is I've invested about eighty bucks. About 60 US from Amazon. This is the Strap Habit, a piece of rice. And they were the only manufacturer actually making 24 millimeter piece of rice. That's what I bought it from Amazon. It looks, it looks stunning. It looks tremendous. Hopefully the lighting condition works really well here. Um, so I can show you all the lovely pieces. Uh, the next one I believe on the line is the Sharp 17. Again, no more introduction required for this particular uh, Alpinist. This is the Alpinist if you're considering or oh, the SPB line series watches that Seiko's making uh, in the Prospects lines, carrying the heritage, of course, and the life of the Alpinist. Um, the, many people will probably have hesitated buying this watch when this watch was widely available. A lot of people have started paying 600, 700, even more for mint or new condition. Of course, the new one, it's almost impossible to find. If you do find one, they will ask, the sellers will ask something ridiculous. Uh, my personal opinion, do not paying over a thousand for the US for this for sure. But if something falls between six to seven hundred dollars, in today's market condition, do grab it. Six fifteen, uh, without a doubt, one of the one of the most um, uh, privileged of, of Seikos that I have here is lovely design. The size, the gold hands, uh, it, it just speaks volumes for its design and the functionality as a field watch. Uh, fantastic, fantastic watch. Six R fifteen movements, very reliable. Before the consolidation of the SARP, of of course the. Um, 
the line to the prospects line. So from a dial perspective, this one speaks volume. As you can see, from a value retention perspective, the Seikos are making new version, of course, different color variants for the uh, for the Alpinist. They will always have its place in its history in the, Al in the Alpinist lineup. That's what I purchased is because I think it's going to be a keeper. Uh, next in line, is uh, hopefully I can get this model right. Uh, if I'm wrong, I do apologize. It's, it's the S... It's X, um, uh, it's the SN, I think it's the SXNS 79. Sorry, if I could get that wrong, if I did get that wrong, this is the made in Japan, uh, uh model. Uh, the reason why I purchased this watch is because, again, about a year ago, I started to realize a lot of um, well known YouTubers start making videos about this watch, claiming how fantastic the dial is, how fantastic the overall design and the color wave. Um, when, it when, when considering that the price at the time is about 120 US, I bought it for about 100, I think 110 US. I could be wrong, but it's very similar. I bought it about 12 months ago. Uh, I don't really wear it that often. It has a water resistance of 30 meters, which I think is one of the laid down. But it's a really small watch, but it, it looks fantastic. I'm not sure whether the cutter wave carried through, uh, but this one has a entry side dial and the loom on this is, is absolutely incredible. Um, uh, a, a lot of luminescence apply on indices and very classic, very good finishing uh, for its particular uh, for its particular cost. Again, I've purchased the AliExpress bracelet, uh, keeping the same original end link as Oyster style, and it works really, really well for this watch. And sometimes I might wife wear it just because how um, how much weight that it punches while well above its price tag. Next in line, uh, of course, we know what kind of day it is. It's the, it's the famous SNA 411 Flighty. Uh, as we see, Flighty, uh, well, what to say about it? it? It is so famous, so well articulated around the watch enthusiast community. I've always hesitated to buy this because, in particular, this one was a course. And most importantly, um, when the time that when I realized uh, it's important to, to collect, um, classic modern Seikos when you can um, and, and you should really stop thinking about anything else because um, from a supply and demand perspective uh, when they are gone they will be gone uh, from a brand new perspective in terms of price I think about a, a year ago they were validly available for about 300 US or 280 US around that around that particular price range now if you want to find brand new I think you can hardly find anything on the 350 or 400 Again, there's no doubt uh, in any given time, the Seiko can, they probably already stopped production in this watch, of course, to carry on, to combine the Speedmasters into the Prospect. So there's no point for them to make uh, cheaply uh, 200 meter chronograph um, um, uh, aviation style watches without incorporating the Prospect's line, of course, Prospects will carry a much higher price tag. It will follow a stringent different rules within the company's guideline. So the flight really is one of the last piece of gray cycles uh, when it comes to value, when it comes to original design, and when it comes to functionality. The, um, the legibility of this is, is actually amazing, in my opinion. Uh, the dial is very busy, especially considering with a dome uh, uh, hot lex crystal um, that, that is very legible. It speaks volumes for its purpose, and I absolutely love it. The next one that we're having here is, of course, everybody knows this is the XK, uh, the SKS, the legendary SKS model. The prices of those watches actually already went skyrocketed um, during that COVID time, and now I think it's stabilized a little bit. Uh, the sellers, a lot of sellers, are choosing to let go of their SKX to reinvest into other Seikos, other brands. Uh, but in my opinion, if you can get one at a decent value of decent mint condition. For around three hundred US, I think that's a, I think that's a great buy, um, because you really wanted to own one of those pieces for the historical importance of its manufacturing history within cycles of its design of its what it, what it, what the watch really meant uh, for the future production of all divers. So if you can spend around three hundred, I think if you can get a great condition such as this as a J model zero zero seven O zero zero nine, and that'll be a fantastic choose. Uh, the origin owner did purchase the separate end links, which is solid and the Oyster brace bracelet i've i've uh, incorporated a strap called bracelet just to complete the whole look on the bracelet i think it looks fantastic without a doubt one of the greatest echoes ever live and it's still living <laughs> next one uh, along the line uh, actually on this line that we have as this is uh, one of the fan favorite fan favorite brown dial uh, the 62 mass or 63 mass that we call the spb series the uh, seiko company released uh, around covid 2020 
as you can see straight away this was one of the early releases that without the three o'clock loom the sick we gotta do now in order to satisfy the um uh the um uh, the, the diverse the diverse 200 um qualification or standards this one was out i think this one is a, a great piece this is a great piece in the long term because without a doubt seiko will keep investing money and and his life into making the 62 mass. Uh, this is not the reissue, this is reinterpretation. The reissue will be the SLA that pays more tribute in the design and much higher specs. So this is the SP line, SPB line. As, as you see, the price of the SPB line, when they started, um, they were much lower than what they are now. Uh, uh, Seiko has released much more color variant for the 63 mass of the in SPB line. This one was originally released with the other three colors, I think between SPB 143, 145, this is the 147, and there was another limited model of 149, which also has a cult following. So this one is, is fantastic. Carries the new 6R35 movements, has a very long power reserve, and um, but in terms of accuracy, it's, it's on par with 6, 6R15, if not a bit less. Um, the quality design of it is 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 definitely punched way about this way, especially if you can get a second hand in a mint condition, I would think between 800, 700 to 800 US, if you can get it, I think that would be great. Always like a dream. Uh, has the die code, uh, die shark, not die shark, the heart. Um, the the heart coating, sorry, I forgot the name of it, excuse me. Um, I th uh, uh, and without the of course without the signing of the coin i've purchased i've, I've sourced an, an oem bracelet for the watch because this one originally came on the strap this one is definitely a keeper um it, it, you can dress it up like this where it was a suit a really slim design can get on the cuff and when i made this um particular video about this watch i think about a year uh, two years ago it was one of the most popular watches on the internet from my uh, from my uh, number of views perspective fantastic moving along um, this one uh, is, of course, the Samurai. Uh, this is a new Samurai. We call them King Samurai now, simply because they have a higher spec in terms of bezel material. Now it's a ceramic. Uh, from a crystal perspective, now it's upgraded to a sapphire crystal with the Cyclops. I think it worked extremely well because it's very legible, uh, very legible. And from a distance, you don't really see it. Doesn't intrude, it doesn't intrude the whole balance of the dial. Uh, this one in particular was made, I think, last year. They started making last year. It's Asia. Uh, uh, it's not limited edition, but it's a special edition that only goes to distributors around Asia. I mean, Australia. That's why we'll be able to get this on, on the stock on the market. The color wave is amazing. It pays design um, tribute um, of coral reefs. So if, when you're looking from afar, this, you can see the burned orange uh, markings on the on the beds. It works really well with that orange hand. And the gold hands works really well with that in, internal chapter ring of... Um, of color matching uh it carries the current design pattern of the waffle waffle dial um not as uh, you know they, they, they're no longer i don't think they're really producing that many of the clean dials anymore on the uh, samurai old turtle uh, but i think from a design perspective this one uh, you, you can't go wrong with the samurai uh, you can dress this watch out because it has those sharp sharp lines and it's just so unique uh it have its presence but at the same time it's very balanced out i think it's a great looking piece um the model number of this is um srps 43 so i sorry if i didn't capture this model this model is spb 147 so this is the srps 43 i've i've chose to invest to bring the best out of the watch which i believe is to because this watch originally came on a rubber strap with the color matching buckle um but you know what? I, I, I love Uncle Seiko and what Larry does with Uncle Seiko in the community. So I purchased his, um, this is the razor wire bracelet. It's very hard to um, to adjust compared to the other bracelet you probably have, especially compared to the screw links. But when you finished the whole thing and you put on the this Samurai, it speaks volumes. Again, this is a no brainer. If you can get this particular a color wave or if there's a one summer that you like if you can spend around 300 if you can get a second hand uh, this one what goes uh, retail goes well beyond 500 us but if you can get a second hand anywhere else in the world for around 400 i think it is a great buy uh really great specs as you know the crystal and bezel will live a very long time without putting a scratch on it so well done srps 43 
um, naturally, let's bring out the turtle, the famous 777, the SRP 777. Um, this one was one of the early collections that I was very lucky to bought this around 200 at the time, I think in the year of COVID 2020. Uh, this is the J model made in Japan uh, at the same time without a third clock loom. I think this is going to be one of the future classics uh, if Seiko uh, do decide to stop production of its, um, of its reissue of the 6309. If you can imagine from a Seiko's perspective, um, I think they stopped, they, they started doing, you know, six, seven years ago. Um, their mindset was let's produce something as extremely close to our heritage of 6319, 6309 without costing our customers an arm and leg. And that's what they did. They really did a fantastic job. Uh, some lovers saying the size from a size perspective is oversized. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's, it's, it's really not oversized. It is fantastic sized, slightly larger than your original, uh, than, than, than your everyday normal divers. But when you realize it, can, it really carries the heritage and combination of utility, function, reliability, and the design of his ancestors uh, it, it speaks fantastic for its volume it's, it's a must have Seiko Turtle is a must have in your collection it's, a, it's a, m m m many people using it as a daily bidder and you know what when you when you put on the when you put on this uh, Uncle Seiko Z199 Super Jubilee uh, not Jubilee Z199 Super Bracelet with the um, solid end link and the male clasp it, it, it is so classic this this SRP 777 it's a very classic watch to have as many as most of the you already have in your collection or you had uh, once in your collection. Uh, moving along, uh, uh, there's a long story about this watch. Well, the first time I saw it, I, I, I go, hang on a second, what is this? Is this a, is this a tuna uh, or is this a monster? Because it carries many design cues from the monster. And when I understand those watches were made by Seiko, uh, uh, you know, about six, seven, eight years back, I think that's as long as I can trace it back. They certainly probably stopped production for this particular model, or they haven't stopped, or they're going to stop. But you can tell the new line of um, similar designs that carry a more rounded edge with different indices. This one really carried the heritage design cue of the tuna. Uh, uh, with the shroud, with its size, and it really copy. And I think it took really great uh, lessons from the monster. And they've 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 done it as it is. They didn't really put anything additional much into the watch to make it more expensive or make it look more different. They simply thought this will be a monstrous watch, and it is. It, this is the people call the yellow thing SRP six hundred nine. If you can get it in different marketplace around three to three fifty, I think is a must have. It is very large, um, but again, that cut, that yellow on the bezel works extremely well with the our with this with the mini hands as, as as well as the second yellow tip on that second hand. It is a tremendous watch. Every time when I do a video on this or short. Upload a shot of this watch, the view just goes straight to the roof. So that just shows there's a definitely a cult following after all the baby tuners, that's what we call them, the baby tuners. And this, this, this yellow, uh, this yellow version, you can call this, this yellow um, uh, Im image one, is, uh, it, it, it's tremendous value. It's funky, it's great, it's a two watch, Diverse 200. And if you're Seiko Lover, you gotta have one of these um, unique designs in your collection. Very happy to have it. Um, Next, next one, last couple of, actually, next one. This is, um, if you guys look at the detail, this is actually the SNJ025. This is the Arnie reissue. Of course, with the up, upgraded uh, stainless, steel, stainless steel shroud and uh, Uncle Seiko 22, um, a piece of rice. <laughs> if, if, Arnie, if Arnie wanted to upgrade the watch to fit his, um, you know, I don't know how many inches of bicep or forearms, I think this is how I would have done it. Um, this is such a beast. Uh, when you look from all angles, it speaks volume for his design it's very similar to his original uh design of arnie's uh, of 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 the line when arnie bought it in the movies predator and kamana back in you know 40 years old 40, uh, 40 years ago um and especially with the upgraded uh, specs such as the shroud and and the Bizarre rice bracelet it, it, it is fantastic watch it is great fun it looks balanced it's elegant if i dare to say and it's a very paying uh, tribute to his original. I think it was a great release, if not one of the best reissues I saved down in the recent years. Well done, Seiko. Uh, the last one, heavy heaters here that I have, is probably one of the most expensive. The one that I have here, this is, if you guys realize the the, the shape of it, you, you know it's a tuna. This is a, I think this was released about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, under the SBBM with the upgraded um, a sapphire crystal compared to the previous generation of the SBBM with the zero classic was a zero uh, SBBM, SBBM 031 or 33. So this one has 
changes crystal from cartlex uh, of course a beautiful dome cartlex to a flat crystal with dome underneath uh, i believe that's what they're saying you know, I, I i really enjoyed this piece uh, I, I i i was very fortunate to pick this up around 700 800 us from a local seller here uh, he purchased from um, uh, Norman watches as you know um spb online if you don't have it if you don't have a tuna you have to have it this is the 300 of course from a tuna family this is probably the entry level of the course movements of the 7c uh 46 sorry if i'm incorrect but the course movement is extremely accurate this watch i've adjusted the time about a month ago actually it hasn't lost a, a single second it's a two watch it carries its heritage it, you know what this watch could be the only watch that you have if you love the brand if you love the style uh, they removed the marine master um text on the dial uh, replaced with the prospects logo as we see this is inevitable from the uh, uh, current strategy and execution of the seiko but I, I i i don't really mind i think the the blue uh, hint on that bezel and the dial it's 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 not black if the black will be more toolish more reliable looks from a looks perspective but this one just give you that answer of feminine balance style i really love this watch the sbbm 043 with with the blue it's a, it's definitely a keeper very accurate um matched with uncle seiko again uh 20 uh, 22 millimeter straight link a uh, president uh president um style bracelet i think it really brings the best out of this watch Thank you guys, first of all, so much. If you're still watching this video or you stopped me away, I really appreciate you no matter how long you watched it. I hope we've built a connection between our hearts because I know many of our, my subscribers are, love, are lovers of Seiko. So it doesn't matter what other brand that you own. But this is my current value in Seiko lineup. Um, it, it, nothing really uh, extraordinary, but I just believe that, you know, 15 of, 15 of humble, cost-effective, um, uh, reliable Seiko watches that will help you with your life uh, from a functionality perspective and, uh, and, and and of course different colors, different styles suit your everyday wearing from all the way from your sports activity uh, to your cocktail parties. I really believe them. Each of them represent a great value from Seiko's current lineups or previous lineup in their uh, modern days production. Nothing vintage here, but I do feel like I'm getting a great variety of design cues and heritage from Seiko. So again, thank you very much. No matter where you are, I hope you have a great Christmas with your family. You stay well, stay healthy, and enjoy whatever watches you're wearing during Christmas. And I hope to see you soon again next year. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.